Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to introduce Fourier series. Um, so let's start with a familiar equation, a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equal f of t. So we've already discussed this, um, this differential equation for a large family of f of t's. So we talked about f of t um, being polynomial. Um, so let's say t to the power n. Uh, we've talked about exponential functions, uh, cosine omega t, sine omega t. Uh, with those, that's where we got our whole discussion of resonance. So um, all of these were functions that we addressed using the method of undetermined coefficients. And uh, we also, when we ended up with wanting to deal with um, functions that have had jumps in them or um, uh or delta functions in them, so step, size, step functions or, or delta functions, we had to move to a new approach, which was the Laplace transform. Um, and, and now what I'd like to do is uh, use this same formalism to motivate Fourier series and expand our collection of f of t's to all periodic functions. So let's assume here that f of t is periodic. meaning it repeats, and how often does it repeat? Is It's periodic with period T, capital T. Uh, so what that looks like is, let's draw it here. So I'll go to, uh, let me look more space there. T, 2T, 3T, and our function, now I'm not going to make very strong assumptions about it. I'm not even going to assume that it's continuous. So let's say it's a function like this that then jumps down all the way back to where it started with it, the origin and continues like this, repeating indefinitely. Now these are, this is, this looks like a function that could easily be represented by a sum of heavy side type functions. Um, but the problem with that is that we need an infinite series of them to keep on going off to infinity uh, in the forward direction. And so we're going to try something a little bit different. So let's just think about if we could represent this instead of by this um, straight lines with jumps, let's think about whether we might be able to represent these with trig functions. So the period of this is going to be um, t. Uh, and so what we need is a function that repeats every capital T. And um, we also want one that has the same symmetry as this. And if I draw this going back in time to back here, you can see that this function has an odd symmetry about the origin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, can I, how, how well can I do if I just take the sine of, and now I need a, the right period, so I'll put in 2 pi over capital T multiplied by T, and you can see how plugging in capital T for little t gives me sine of 2 pi, so that's going to give me a period of capital T. Now what does this look like? Um, so obviously uh, this function f of t here, so this is f of t, it has uh, a negative area here and a positive area there, so, or a positive value, and so we probably want to do something like minus and then maybe multiply by some scale, and if we choose a very cleverly or well, we could get a function that looks like that in there, and that would repeat every capital T and so on. Going back in time as well. And you can see that that does okay, but it really misses here and it really misses uh, here and here. And so because it overshoots in some places and undershoots in other places, I have to fix that. And you'll notice that it the way it overshoots and undershoots is alternating. So what I, what I wouldn't mind having here is something that subtracts off a little bit more over here 
adds something here, subtracts off something there, and adds something here to what I already have. And now what does that? Well, something that is um, negative here, and then positive through here, and then negative here, and then positive here, and then negative there. So you can see that if I add to this, so this I'm going to call this one a1, and then I'm going to add to this a2 times the sine of, and this one that I just drew here that's going up and down in the right places to fill in those gaps a little bit more, is going to be the sine of 2 pi over t, but now this one has a period of half what the one I just had, so then what I have to change is that 2 has to change into a 4. And now when I get to t little t equal t over 2, so if I plug in capital T over 2 here, then I get to 2 pi, and that means this has a period of pi uh, t over 2. So that's the type of that I want, and then that will be a little bit closer. And that's not going to be perfect, but I can always keep on adding or subtracting, depending on what I need, more and more of these coefficients. So let's go over to Desmos and actually take a look at what this looks like if we program it up. So here is Desmos zoomed in a little too far. Hang on, let me fix that. So what you can see here is a plot of the function that I started with, which is in blue. So that is the periodic function. Here are a few of its pieces. And I've, uh, I've set capital T equal to 2 in this case, just to have some numbers so we can do some plotting. Um, and what I've superimposed on that is in orange above is just a vertically shifted identical version of this first one, which is, uh, this one is uh, sine of pi over t. And that's the first mode that I drew in the picture, but with t equal, capital T equal 2. And you can see that it does okay, but it is not low enough here, it's not high enough here, and it's not, uh, it's too high here, and it's too low here. And so what we're going to add in is one more term. And here you can see the two terms that I'm adding in separately, in orange and in red. And down here is their sum. And you can see that I've definitely, I'll flip back and forth so you can see. There, that is, so down, if you watch this part here and then the next in sequence as I do it, you can see I've lowered it in that first section. I've raised it so it, it's closer to the blue line in the second section. And then in the third section, I've dropped it. And in the last section, I've raised it by adding in one more term with a sine function that's of one half the period of the first. And now if you look, there's an, another alternating sine error. So I'm too low or too, not negative enough here, too negative here, not negative enough, too po not positive enough, not high enough, not low enough, and so on. So I can add in another term with m equal 3, and this one will pull, this one actually is not uh, a huge, doesn't make a huge impact, it's a little bit better. Um, but then n equal 4 is going to iron out some of the kinks I just described when we were at m equal 2. And a lot of the kinks that we are adding in as we go to m equal 5 and so on, are very subtle and tricky to see, but we are going to learn how to do calculations to fill in those with the exact right coefficient. And you can see here, if you look at my uh, formulas, you can see that I've figured out that there's a coefficient required here of uh, 2 over pi, and here 2 over 2 pi, and here 2 over 3 pi, and so on. So that's finding the Fourier coefficients, and we'll do that in a subsequent video. But here you can see I've put it all together into a sum of sine of n pi t multiplied by minus 1 over n pi and I'll multiply by 2 and what I get as I increase the value of m now I'm not plotting all of them above anymore because it would just get too crowded but I'm still plotting the sum of all of these and you can see that the function is getting closer and closer 
to the original blue function. It's almost laying right on top of it in the middle of that ramp. And then there's this jump here, which we can't really do anything about. We're always going to have to go through zero, um, but it's as close as you can get with a continuous function, or it's becoming as close as you can get to a continuous function with, sorry, to a discontinuous function with a continuous function. And there's a phenomenon here that is called Gibbs phenomenon, which is a chronic overshoot around these jumps. And that's not really going to go away, but it's going to get squished closer and closer to the region around the jump. And so if you send this off to infinity, which I'm not doing here, I'm just going up to 30, um, this will actually converge point-wise to the function, except at the jump. And we will go through and see some examples of how you actually calculate some of these uh, Fourier series yourself. And we'll also apply this not just to um, being able to use method of undetermined coefficients to solve the second order differential equation with a periodic, a general periodic right hand side. We'll also learn how to use these to solve things like the heat equation and the wave equation. Those will come up in subsequent videos.